Aha! I'm not jumping over the chair today because I have very precious cargo in my hands. S cargo. No, not snails. Indigo snake. Eastern indigo snake to be exact. And we're going to talk about their care today. Uh, some of the information is just stuff I'm regurgitating that I've read, heard, or learned from the breeder that I got these snakes from. But I'm also going to talk about how I keep them and a little bit about other stuff like that. Uh, their care and maybe what they do in the wild a little bit. Also, really quick, I've got these couple packages that people sent me. And I, if there's time, I will open them up on this video. If not, then we'll just get to it on tomorrow's video or the next video. Let's jump right into it. So indigo snakes are part of the Drymarcon genus that also includes yellowtail and blacktail Kribos, which are their southern counterparts in Central America and South America. There are also Texas indigos, but this here is the eastern variety, and the eastern variety of indigos is the longest species of snake in the United States. And they have a fairly limited range. It's basically Georgia, Florida, and maybe a little bit of southeastern Mississippi. Something to note about indigos is that they are protected. Uh, you are legally able to buy captive bred specimens. However, you may need a permit depending on what state you live in. You always need a permit if you're getting it from out of state. Um, I purchased my indigo from a breeder here in California, so I didn't need such permit, but if you're looking to getting one, just make sure you, you pay attention to that fact. Now, first off, let's talk about their temperament a little bit. From what I've heard, even in the wild, they're very reluctant to bite defensively. From what I understand, you can just go pick one up in the wild and just handle it just like I'm holding my little beautiful boy right here. They're very aware. Their feeding response is incredible. They come flying like a heat-guided missile at their prey, but I can just reach my hand in there without a hook and pick this guy up. No problem. Very aware of things that are prey and things that are not. Temperament, fantastic. Very active, yet very aware. Not just going to do big dumb strikes because they're like... Nah. Their diet in the wild is very diverse. They eat all kinds of stuff. Rabbits, rodents, birds, frogs, lizards, eggs, even other snakes. They're actually immune to venom. So they, these guys munch on rattlesnakes um, in certain populations. So that's pretty impressive. And uh, what I feed them here is rodents. I have tried to offer them a, a ball python I had that crawled out of the egg and died. And neither of my indigos seem to be very interested in it. So... Maybe if I sent it with the rodents that they've been eating, then that would be a thing, but they, they didn't. And uh, something I learned from Robert Bruce, which is where I got a lot of my information on indigo snakes, is uh, somebody I consider to be one of the most knowledgeable people. He is the most knowledgeable person I have met in person on indigo snakes. He's worked predominantly with this species for years, and I'm hoping to do a triple B interview with him again um, this coming Pomona show. So that'll be, that'll be cool to see if we can get that happening. As I mentioned, their feeding response is intense and incredible, and they don't actually constrict their prey. They just grab it and power it, just overpower it, just, just grab it, start eating it like crazy beasts. It's a pretty impressive thing to see and uh, very exciting to watch. Now, what was recommended is that you don't feed them, especially as somebody myself who keeps a lot of pythons, and pythons can stretch their mouths super wide to swallow prey like three times the size of their head. Indigos do not have that flexibility in their face necessarily. In fact, you don't really want to feed them anything much bigger than their head. Maybe, you know, definitely not bigger than the thickest part of their body because they just don't have the jaws that work like pythons do. And they just, and, <laughs> but, but they eat a lot and they will take down just about anything, it seems. I've heard of people feeding like slices of tilapia even. I may start offering these guys quail and whatnot, but the rodents seem to be doing a pretty good job and they're getting what they need out of the rodents. Um, one other thing that was recommended to me is that I soak them so that their claws soften. Uh, Robert did mention that he has lost babies to uh, the rodents' claws uh, tearing their stomach lining, which I thought was interesting. So I always soak them to thaw them in water and let those nails get nice and soft before offering them to the snakes. One other thing Robert mentioned is that if it takes them too long to eat the meal you gave them, then it's probably too big. Uh, if it took longer than five minutes, I think it was, then... He recommended uh, you need to cut down a size because it's too big. That's why it's taking him too long to eat it. Before we dive any further into this video, I want to point out the fact that I am no expert on snake keeping whatsoever. I just really enjoy it and I'm soaking up information as I go. A lot of people wanted to see a video on this, so I figured I'd give it my best shot. If you have any other tips or tricks about keeping indigo snakes of your own that you'd like to share, please leave a comment down below and let us know what those tips and tricks are. 
because I'm here to learn too. Let's talk about the temperature for indigo snakes. Uh, the lowest you really want it to get is into the high 60s. Uh, they're pretty comfortable in the mid 70s to low 80s or high 70s to low 80s. You can give them a hot spot up to the mid mid 90s. I personally keep my room between 75 and 80 degrees and it was suggested to me that that was a fine temperature for these guys to cruise at so I don't give them any supplemental heat though I could easily with the flick of a switch uh, I just keep these guys at the ambient room temperature of between 75 and 80 degrees and they've been doing just fine they've been here for it's gonna be a little over eight months now that they've been here and they've been doing great as far as caging I've got them in an FB 70 which is roughly two feet by three feet or maybe 14 inches by 30 something inches and w by the time they're adults i will have them in a five by three enclosure uh, they they are very active um so they like to move around i tend to get them out a lot and you'll find if you keep indigo snakes that end up giving them lots of enrichment outside of the enclosure just because they're so cool to handle and watch let's talk about the substrate this is a blend of shredded not shredded aspen but uh aspen shavings and it's a newspaper pellet that I got from the pet store and just blended that kind of half and half and I find that it works really well they can burrow in it and uh, this is this is my extra tub of, of substrate I also recommend doing something like that just having a whole extra thing where you can have fresh substrate to replace spot cleaning spots this, it works out great and these guys defecate and y these guys go to the bathroom a lot like daily having something like this that helps absorb all the uh, uh, urine and loose uh, stools and whatnot these guys will wreck their enclosure you will clean their enclosure daily I promise uh, this is the exact substrate that was recommended by Robert so this is what I've been using and I found that it, it does keep the odor down even when they do soil it and you get it out of there quickly and it clumps together well and you're able to just pull it all out and do very effective spot cleaning this way with all my snakes I do a full substrate switch every time they shed is the female she's the black throat variety one thing i didn't mention that other male he's got the red throat of course and she's got the black throat they're both eastern indigos but there's just those two different color variations that um that these guys have going on she is a little more squirrely than he is but same same uh, awareness and and same temperament uh basically the last thing i'd like to mention is the the sunlight exposure that Robert recommended doing is uh, bringing these guys out into the sunlight at least once a week. And now you certainly don't have to let your snake crawl around on the ground. If you do do that, just be very careful because they are quite fast and you don't want them to dodge and do a little hole real quick or something or get attacked from above by some kind of bird of prey. That would be very, very unfortunate as well. So just be diligent if you're bringing them outside and when you're bringing them outside, but holding them into the natural sunlight just like this is, is all you really need to do. Maybe like 10-15 minutes a week or so will, will suffice but it's a great reason to bring your snake outdoors and uh, let them soak up some of that UVB that they're going to benefit from. Uh, many many snakes do benefit from ultraviolet light especially diurnal snakes like indigos are and most colubrids I believe. Oh, I, I also didn't mention that at the beginning of the video. These guys are from the colubrid family. Jarmacon genus, Jarmacon cooperi is a specific uh, scientific name for this species indigo snakes. I was getting a little claustrophobic in that room and I wanted to show you guys something out here around the back. There's that turtle enclosure that I was working on a little while ago. Family's already gone down to Southern California by the way they're not here. All gone bye bye. It's all Brian by himself today. So there'll be no what do you know unfortunately. They're gonna be down there when we get down there from Pomona coming up real quick here though so that'll be fun and we'll be hanging out at the booth. But here's that turtle enclosure. If you missed the building of it you can go and watch this video right here and uh, it'll show you what we did to build this thing. A little latch. It's been getting some nice filtered light. And put a little or a big hide in there for her. And I'll probably change this out to some kind of ceramic dish or something a little more natural looking. I put a bunch of the cocoa blocks in there to mix in with the regular soil, some leaf litter and whatnot. And I was eating some crickets dusted in calcium today. Not hiding in here, I don't think. Is actually preferring these little log things over here check this out screw you i just found my happy place can you please leave me alone yeah i'll leave you alone i could tell you're, you're enjoying it under there okay sorry bye have i been saying tortoise this whole time instead of turtle it's a turtle not a tortoise just in case i don't know what i've been saying i can't keep track of my words 
I hope I've been saying turtle. I don't want to go back and replace every single word with turtle instead of tortoise. Let's just let's just pretend it was turtle because it's a turtle. Let's go open up those packages. Here we go. First package. I don't know what this is or oh, you know, actually it says right on there. It's a shirt from Canada. Thanks, Canada. It's from David Limburner, Nihilist Conservation. Check them out, guys. Up there in Canada, all you Canadian folks. Go check these guys out, even if you're not Canadian. This is from DeVoe, I hope I'm saying that right, over in Massachusetts. Oh, just kidding, it's from France. By way of Massachusetts. I, I'll, I'll send you back some, I'll send you back some stickers. Thanks, France. Sophie. Now th this one says it's for the whole family, so we're gonna have to wait on that one, but hey, I hope you guys enjoyed the Indigo Care video. I hope it was good. Again, if you didn't leave a comment down below and you have tips and tricks that I didn't mention, please do that so we can all learn together here a little bit more than we have already discovered so far. I hope you guys are having a great day. Aloha. Let's jump right into it. <clears throat> And it's funny because I didn't jump. Remember in the last video when I said that I wasn't doing snake videos anymore and it was like this big joke? Uh, why did I say I didn't do snake videos anymore and then the next video I do is all about snake care is because I'm a liar. I'm a habitual liar. Not to be malicious or anything, I just, I think I'm funny. Mm -hmm.